Quinana Hismod Plant layout. The Quinana Hismod Plant operates under a joint venture between Rio Tinto, New Core, Mitsubishi and Shugan. A photograph of the plant is shown in figure. Coal is dried and ground to the size less than 3 mm in an air swept mill and is then pneumatically fed by nitrogen to the smelter with lime flux. Iron ore is preheated in a circulating fluidized bed preheater. Hot ore and calcium dolomite flux are then also pneumatically fed to the SRV using nitrogen. The coal, lime, or dolomite and nitrogen are injected into the SRV smelt reduction vessel via two opposed water-cooled lances. Of gas from the SRV is cooled in a hood similar to that on a blown oxygen furnace and is then scrubbed before being burned in a boiler as low calorific value fuel gas. A special design of a gas burner is needed to accommodate this low CV gas. Full gas from the boiler is scrubbed for sulfur dioxide removal in a conventional full gas desulfurization plant before final release. The steam raised by the boiler is used to drive steam turbines for the hot air blast blower, the oxygen plant, air compressor and an electrical generator. The electrical generator supplies sufficient power for all of the electrical drives on the Hismod plant with 5% excess power sold to the grid. The ore preheater is designed to operate on SRV of gas at 1000 degrees of Celsius ex the hood. But to date it has been fired on air and natural gas decoupled mode to reduce startup issues involved with commissioning two new technologies in parallel. Winana plant progress. Construction commenced in January 2003 and hot commissioning was initiated in April 2005. The first hot charge, 26th of April 2005, did not go well and resulted in freezing of metal in the forehard. The root was in this case was a steam system power on the off-gas hood. Since then, steady progress has been made. Overall plant availability average since, since hot commissioning has been quite disappointing. Some of the reasons for this are discussed. Iron ore preheater. The iron ore preheater was the single most frequent cause of non-availability of the Hismod plant during the first two years of operation. Although the iron ore preheater design had been used previously on the Circor plant in Trinidad, many painful lessons had to be learned over the first two years of operation to obtain satisfactory availability of the preheater. This included the replacement and redesign of the feed screw conveyors and replace, replacement of the original vessel refractory lining due to high failure rates associated with suboptimal installation and material selection. However, these modifications along with changes in operation have resulted in major improvements in the availability of the preheater from less than 50% in 2006 to more than 90% in 2008. Steam system. Due to the independent nature of the Hismo plant and Quinana, it is heavily reliant on the steam generated by the process for driving steam turbines for the process and oxygen plant air compressors. Any loss of the plant boiler and or steam system will cause the process to stop and the oxygen plant to be put on hold. During the first 12 months of operation, the boiler was the second most frequent cause of non-availability of the Hismod plant due to the problems controlling steam pressure and temperature, and the flame stability issues due to the low CV SRV of gas. However, control system modifications along with changes in operation have resulted in major improvements in the, in the availability of the boiler from 70% in 2006 to more than 90% in 2008. 
For future plans, it will be recommended that process support equipment and oxygen plant air compressors be electrically driven. The his mode plant will thus not be as reliant on steam system availability. Flue gas desulfurization. After a period of initial operation, it became clear that the FGD plant was undersized and that our gas rates were limited significantly below their design values as a result. For an extended period, it was necessary to operate the smelter with a reduced hot blast rate in order to stay within the capacity of FGD plant. The problem was not related to sulfur dioxide removal, but rather to demisting of the final flue gas. With inadequate demisting capacity, there was a degree of gypsum carryover in fine droplets, which was unacceptable from an environmental nuisance point of view. This problem was rectified in April 2007 with installation of a supplementary demisting vessel. Major operational lessons One of the aims of the Quinana plan is to expose large plan issues in a controlled and safe manner. This is the only way to mature the technology before it is passed on to others. Key learnings the hard way include the following. First, freezing of metal in the forehearth as occurred during first hot charge was particularly troublesome since reopening the connection between the forehearth and the main vessel was very difficult. It is impossible to operate the plant safely without a working forehearth. Appropriate countermeasures have since been developed and there has been no recurrence. None are expected. 2. In March 2007, there was a loss of control over the carbon balance in the SRV. The result was slack foaming, partly as a result of cold slack and our overfeed. This condition was sustained unrecognized for around 6 hours, by which time the pig iron inventory had been largely converted into steel. This led to the formation of 200-300 mm thick steel accretions on the water panels, which on cooling exerted enormous stresses on the water piping and led to enormous water leaks. An extended outage was required to remove the steel accretions and to replace a substantial number of water panels. Countermeasures in this case involve a software pattern recognition system, specific operator training and an online carbon dust visual feedback system to show in real time if there is a carbon deficit in the smelter. In December 2007, there was a hot metal breakout from the SRV, which resulted from loss of the working lining due to a combination of mechanical failure of the lining and wear. The situation was handled safely and professionally, and the containment, containment system proved adequate. Failure to properly recognize the status of the refractory and resulting thermal behavior of the shell in the critical zone appears to be at the heart of this event. Countermeasures, apart from operator training, include selective installation of corporate slag zone coolers and permanent shell surface temperature measurements in the critical region.